Apex here in Vegas. Here's your tail of the tape for this one at 125 pounds. Viviani Ujo out of Brazil is 33. This next matchup tonight, three rounds this scheduled in the UFC flyweight division. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner. She's a freestyle fighter standing five feet, seven inches tall. Weighing in officially 125 and one half pounds, her professional record stands at 11 victories and five defeats. Fighting out of Fort Worth, Texas, here is Montana De La Rosa. And across the octagon, her opponent fighting out of the red corner. This mixed martial artist stands five feet, four inches tall. She weighed in at the flyweight limit, 126 pounds, and in 10 fights, holds a record of eight victories and two defeats. Fighting out of the capital city of Brasilia, Brazil, she is the UFC's number eight rated flyweight contender in the world, Viviane, Vivi Araujo. And your referee in charge of the action is Jason Herzog. Jason Herzog, our referee for this one. The great Brittany Palmer is with us tonight in the fight capital of the world. Montana De La Rosa, a plus 160 underdog tonight. First round, fight, are you ready? Viviana Ujo is fight. minus 180. You like saying that, Ada Ujo, DC? Ada Ujo, yes. All right, Next this week. fight clock is brought to you by Tenet from revolutionary director Christopher Nolan, only in theaters. Rated PG-13. Makes me feel a little bit like you, John. Just pronounce the name. striking already she just looks more confident in this part of mixed martial arts 40 seconds in well before she just wanted to get the fight to the ground now she doesn't seem to be rushing but that's a dangerous proposition against Otto Ujo who just landed a beautiful straight right to the body Christian Allen the outstanding boxing coach has been working with Montana De La Rosa of late and of course is in her corner tonight it's very different to watch De La Rosa not be trying to press into takedowns. Even when they came together for a second there, she backed right up to get back to countering. So this must be something they worked on in camp, her trying to counter Ara Ujo. What you don't want to do, though, is allow Vivi to control and dictate the pace of the fight. She is so good with her Muay Thai. And she wants to strike. Mm -hmm. She can always lean on the grappling if need be. <laughs> but the former Pancras strawweight champion oh. and Brazilian Muay Thai cup champ. Hey, notice that though, John. You saw what just happened there? She noticed that De La Rosa is countering her shot, so she fainted. When Montana threw her punch, she dipped and threw that overhand right. That was beautiful. Here it is, watch. She trying to... Draw out my look at that. Ooh. There it is again, trying to draw out Montana's counter so she can throw the overhand over the top. You gotta beat her there. Stay on top. All right, so we hit the floor for the first time, not for long. De La Rosa made a mistake there. She allowed Otto Ujo to clear her hips, and now Vivi has her back. Stiff right hand from Ada Ujo, who had already gotten to the brown belt level in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu before she even began her MMA training. If you watch her fight, she looks like a lifelong striker. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she does. I mean, she's so comfortable and confident. And that right leg kick has landed a few times on Montana. And the last one really did seem to bother her. There it is. You see that? She's down. She's trying to switch stances because those kicks start to really take effect on her. We got two minutes, Carl. We got two minutes. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Good job. Yeah. Ujo fighting in honor of her late grandmother, Lucia, who passed away earlier this year at the age of... Check one at least. And stop lunging. And part of the reason she's lunging, look at that. Part of the reason she's lunging so much into her strikes is because that front leg has been beat up a little bit. You can see the visual on the back of that left calf of Montana De La Rosa. 
And of course, the nose has been compromised here early as well. Nice inside leg kick though for Montana. And that would serve De La Rosa well. Throw more kicks, not just punches. To this point, she has tries to counter with punches every time. And Otto Rizzo sees him coming. She's much lighter on her feet. That's why Viviani can back in and out of position so quickly. And that jab is busting her up. Nice athleticism by Araujo after it looked like De La Rosa was going to get that body lock. Beautiful takedown defense by Araujo. Montana maybe need to take those attacks at the legs a little bit, opposed to attacking the body of Viviana. But De La Rosa has done some good work this round herself. She has. Nice left hand from De La Rosa. She is circling toward that power right of Otto Ujo. Late shot from Otto Ujo. Competitive first round. Round two next. Allen and Elliot Marshall in the corner. Lot to digest. Any major takeaways for you? You know, just that they, they they think that she just wants to throw the right hand, but I think they should have maybe told Montana a little bit about being light on her feet and anticipating those outside leg kicks because eventually, if she waits too long, trying to counter and deal with them will be too late. Look at that. Those leg kicks are really beating her up right now. Yep. And an immediate retreat by Ada Ujo to prevent De La Rosa from landing on the counter. You're right, she's got a violent style. And she is putting it on De La Rosa here early round two. Yes, she is. And, and De La Rosa's on her heels, man. The whole time she's had her on her heels. Notice how her back is always skating along the side of the octagon. Ada Ujo is not allowing her to dictate the pace and pressure to fight at all. And I would agree with Elliot Marshall. Montana did win that exchange. But again, another debilitating low and leg look, kick. Look at, look at her limping now, John. You see, it's really starting to take an effect. She's not putting much weight on her left leg. She has not counted any of those. If you're in the corner of Araujo, you want to just start throwing them. Just like the guy from, uh, the guy from Elevation, Chris Gutierrez. He does that all the time. He throws outside leg kick, low outside leg kick. He even got a finishing one recently that we called. So if you're Araujo, you want to keep blasting that leg low with your right leg kick. Your first, you win. Yes. Ada Ujo actually made her UFC debut as a bantamweight, but her prior fight coming into UFC as she lands a right hand was down at strawweight. So she has found her wheelhouse in between at 125 pounds. I mean, I called her I called her debut in the UFC, and I was amazed at how well she fought. She took that fight on real short notice yep. and just looked phenomenal. And tonight, she seems to be back to form. That Ada Ujo jab, piston like tonight, and a huge left hook for Vivian. And in, the, in between, Montana is doing good work, but she's just not putting enough activity out of there. There it is. See right there, she threw a, a punch combination and a kick combination, and they both landed. She's just got to be more active if she's going to make... Oh, wow, nice right hand by Araujo. But then she backs right up, right? There it is. If you're Montana De La Rosa, these are the things that you have to keep doing. And there's no denying her mental and physical toughness, so all of a sudden, maybe a window of opportunity here for De La Rosa. But Montana is breathing with her mouth wide open, John. It's yeah. the blood, I don't know if it's the blood, I don't know if her nose is damaged, yeah. but for some reason, she is breathing with her mouth wide open. Yep, Rob Monroe, one of the best cut men in the game, oh, had a hard nice time right stemming the tide with that blood after the previous round, and you're right, huge right hand from Vivian. Yeah. 
Mantenha descansa. Mantenha descansa de novo um pouquinho. Respira. Mantenha descansa, respira. Nice Mantém front kick for De La Rosa. Me escuta, Mantém descansa. I mean, when you watch De La Rosa, or you watch her standing and striking with a tough Viviana Araújo, you understand that she has improved. No doubt about it. She has improved a ton in the striking. But she has not been able to get the fight where she needs it. She needs to be grappling a little bit more with Araújo. Because for as well as she's doing, look at how beat up her face is. Yep. Well, good news for De La Rosa. She's already number 11 in the world, and she was born in 1995. So she is truly just getting going. Yeah, she's a baby, man. She's She is is improving very fast and really showing a good accounting of herself in a kickboxing match with Viviana Araujo. Now, does that serve her best in terms of trying to get the victory? No. But there is something to be taken from that as you go forward in your career. But this fight's not over. De La Rosa's daughter, Zaylin, nine years old, a state champion wrestler in Texas already, and starting to strike now a little bit, too. John, as this round goes longer, Montana continues, yeah, Montana continues to do such good work that this round has really gotten closer as we've gone longer. Now Araujo needs to push a little bit. All the forward pressure is great, but Montana has done some really good work in the last minute and a half. She has certainly maintained her focus as Araujo lands late in the round. All right, a competitive second round. De La Rosa with a lot of moments. Round three next. I mean, that was a brutal leg kick. All right, third and final round between two of the top 11 at 125 pounds. I love the corner work of Montana's corner telling her, hey, you just need this round. She asked, do I need to get a takedown? And they said, just win the round. It's a close fight, and honestly, I would not be surprised if this is 1-1 because Montana did some fantastic work in the last couple minutes of the second round. And I'm also being told Montana De La Rosa has had some nose issues in the past, so perhaps this is a recurring issue that is rearing its ugly head uh -huh. at an inopportune time tonight, but she's fought right through it, man. She has. You know, she has not batted an eyelid. She has continued on the path, continued to try and fight in the way that she intended to fight tonight. And the reason she did so well is because she picked up the activity. She went harder as the round went longer. And beautiful left collar tie and uppercuts from Montana De La Rosa. Seemed like a pretty contentious Araujo corner after round two. They saw what we saw, John. They saw that that second round became really, really close as it went longer. They told us she's making it harder than it needs to be. Don't rush, take your time, and relax. Well, De La Rosa has really brought it with the volume. She's thrown almost 50 more strikes. She picked it up, man. She really did pick it up at the end of the second round in the show. Do more kicks. Do more right hands. That jab is uh, Vivi, though, man. It's nasty. It lands almost every time she pops it out there. Well, fight fans, have you seen what's new at UFCstore.com? Check out new apparel, the return of heavy bags, and the island-ready styles that just launched. Start shopping out at UFCstore.com and save 10% on your first order. And now Viviani's showing her strikes. She's jumping into that left hook right hand. And De La Rosa's starting to feel herself. She's all beat up, she's bloodied, but look at her. Giving her swagger, moving her head, bouncing around. And I mean, when was the last time Vivi threw one of those beautiful outside leg kicks? That was one of her best attacks early in the fight. Araujo has moved her head exceedingly well defensively. She's forced a lot of misses, at least on paper here to my left from De La Rosa. Oh, man. But every time, right, that jab just lands. Every time she throws the jab, she's landing. But I'd like to see Vivi throw that outside leg kick. That damaged Montana. Two minutes now to go. Again, there's that patented.
So she needs to go back to that well. But that pace and pressure that Araujo is fighting with, though. Oh, nice right hand right there over the top. De La Rosa showing off a pretty good shin after another powerful connection from Vivi. But everything that worked for her, everything that I feel allowed her to get back into the fight round two, she has not done in round three. Because Araujo has made the adjustments and taken the fight back to her in the way that we saw early. Fighting behind that jab. The only thing missing is that outside leg kick. Oh, nice movement by Ada Ujo, and she appeared to catch De La Rosa on the way in. She's got that wizard and throwing punches. She's got to get an underhook if she's going to defend here. Watch as Vivi's going to take the right side, try to lift the underhook in order to circle. There it is, left side underhook. Start circling to get De La Rosa off of her to get back to the center. All right, final 25 seconds now. No denying the gameness of both fighters. Uh -huh. But this is what you wanted to see, right? Aro Ujo coming back into the octagon after a tough year has really led the dance in this fight. And there were moments. But look at that right hand there. Yeah, her Great hands fight. are fast as hell. And she rolls with punch as well. Montana De La Rosa and Viviani Ada Ujo go the distance. And Grandma would be proud of Vivi tonight. This score.